All right. So I want to talk to you guys today about something that, uh, that you all know about, right? So, and it's inertia. And I was playing soccer with my little 18-month-old uh, before I came over here today. And in fact, he knows about inertia, right? So he knows that this ball is just going to sit here until something happens to it. And that something is usually him kicking it. So he kicks it, and then it rolls until it smashes into something or until, it, uh, until friction slows it down. So he doesn't know about friction, but he knows about the inertia, right? So inertia is the tendency for something to stay in the same state of motion that it's in. Um, and uh, But what I want to talk about is how inertia applies on a bigger scale than just the just the ball, right? Because this is how we've learned about it. I learned about it in physics um, in high school. My physics teacher, Mr. Fuller, rolled a ball down the down the a bowling ball down the down the hard down the hallway to explain to us what uh, what inertia was. Um, but I want to talk about it on a on a bigger level. So um, the introduction mentioned that I played uh, I played soccer. I had a lot of great moments on the soccer field. Um, I did. Uh, most of those moments were in high school and college. I played professionally, but not well enough to uh, not well well enough to do this demonstration, I guess, but not well enough to be able to buy cheese when I went to the supermarket, um, and not well enough that I didn't have to be a professor after I retired. So, um, but one of my biggest regrets of my soccer career, and something if you, if any of you have any soccer years left, because um, hopefully this talk will help you avoid the regret, is never trying a panenka, which is. Um, Kind of the first story I'm going to talk about is a bigger picture of uh, a bigger vision, bigger um, version of inertia. Um, and so, without further ado, I'll uh, introduce Antonin Panenka. So he deserves to be a soccer legend, right? He was uh, he was a Czechoslovakian Player of the Year um, in the in the 80s, um, and he was a uh, played creative attacking midfielder. That was my position. That's the best position to to play. You get to try to score goals and do things like that. Um, but he, the reason he deserves to be a legend is because of a, an innovation he brought to the game. So I want to talk about the European Championships in 1976. So this is like the biggest soccer tournament in, in Europe, all the countries playing against each other. Um, Czechoslovakia has made it to the final, which is a big deal for Czechoslovakia. Um, and they're playing against West Germany. So the game ends tied 2-2. Two to two. They go into overtime, right, and still tied. So in soccer, after to try to settle tie games, they have penalty kicks, which is basically a shot from 12 yards away, um, just the shooter and the goalkeeper. And most of these penalty shots get made because there's no defenders. Um, and the the what the um, what the shooter tries to do is just shoot it into the corners of the goal, right? Um, so Panenka steps, or so it goes into his penalty kicks. The first seven shooters all make it. So it's five shooters for each team. And then after those five shooters, whatever the score is, that's who wins. Um, so the first seven shooters all make it. Then the next West German guy misses. Um, so Panenka steps up. And this is like this dream scenario, right? This is something you think about when you're practicing soccer um, as a kid. Uh, if he makes the penalty kick, his team wins, and he's a hero to his nation, right? Which would cease to exist after 1993. But he's a hero for a while for Czechoslovakia. Um, so I'll ruin the suspense. He made it, of course, right? I wouldn't be talking about him, but it's the way that he made it that um, ties into inertia. So I've got a, I've got a video. Right. A replay is coming. So that's him kicking it. Okay, so he kicked the ball really slowly right down the middle of the goal, right? And the goalie was the Sepp Meyer is a German goalkeeper, bet one of the best goalie in the world at the time. If he had just stood there, he could have caught it very easily, right? Um, but what Panenka did, he knew about uh, more than just the inertia of the ball, right? Because everybody's thinking about, okay, this is the ball. I'm going to try to you know, change the inertia of the ball and put it as hard as possible into the corner of the goal. Um, what happened after a lot of people start doing that is the goalies would try to dive early to try to save the shots, right? Because if they don't move early, there's there's no chance the goalie's just gonna or the shooter's just gonna put it into the corner. Um, so the goalies would dive early, and then they figure, okay, well at least if I guess the right side, I have at least a small chance of of saving this shot. So Paneka studied the system, but he didn't just study the inertia in the ball. He studied the larger system. He said, okay, there's goal there's inertia in this goalkeeper, right? 
this goalkeeper's movement is, uh, is going in one direction. But he also studied an even larger system, right? And that's the, that's the trends on penalty shots. He knew that the first seven shooters had all tried to shoot it to the corners hard. He knew that in every game this goalkeeper had ever played in before, the guys shooting would try to shoot it hard into the corners. So he understood the inertia and the trends in that system too. And that's why, that's why when he came up for his hero making shot, he was like, I'm gonna kick it right down the middle of the goal and I'm gonna score. So that's what happened. Um, but I wanted to talk about how inertia can make the world better. And for someone like me, I completely understand how a, a beautiful penalty kick like that makes the world a better place. But some people might be skeptical. So I have another example. This one's from my family vacations, right? And this is uh, Ocean City, New Jersey. It's a sandy barrier island, like a lot of them um, around the, uh, down, the, down the coast. Um, and what these barrier islands do naturally, right, is move up and down the coast with the, with the currents, right? So waves um, take sand from the north end of the island, move it to the south end of the island, and the islands just kind of move up and down. Well, once you build houses on the islands, um, you don't want the island to be moving anymore, um, and so it creates problems. So um, from a sustainability standpoint, probably the best thing to do is just not build houses where um, on barrier islands that are naturally moving up and down the coast, but uh, that's not something I'm gonna do, right? Because this is my house on Ocean City, and I've gone there every year um, since I was a since I was a little kid. My wife and I got married within walking distance to the to the cottage. Um, that's all a whole bunch of members of my extended family in the picture there, um, and so it's, the house is a connection to all of those people um, and to people who have yet to be born and who have um, already passed on. So. I need kind of like a middle ground solution between abandoning this island altogether and living on it more sustainably. Um, so you got to try to control the inertia in the ocean system, right? There's a lot of, a lot of inertia. One thing that's pretty common is these jetties. I don't know how many of you have seen these before, but they're basically big piles of, of heavy rocks that extend out into the ocean in various directions, and they try to control the, control the sand, right? So the jetty sticks out and prevents the, the sand from, uh, from moving up and down the coast. So that's, that's the prevailing solution. Um, a better solution, and this isn't my kid that I was talking about, this is my nephew, but in the background is what I want you to see is the dunes. Uh, uh, the dunes actually work better than jetties. I mean, they look simpler, and what dunes are, in my nephew's words, are just big piles, right? Big piles of sand, which he gets very excited about. The reason the dunes work better is uh, kind of ties into inertia, right? And so the jetties, when the water slams against the jetties, it's like a, me kicking the soccer ball against that wall. It's going to bounce back violently, right? Um, so when the water does that, it bounces back off the jetties violently and pulls more sand with it. So the jetties actually often do more harm than good in terms of the beach erosion. Um, whereas a, a dune like this is like me kicking a soccer ball up, up a ramp, right? It goes up slowly and then slowly comes back down, so the dune works better, um, works better with the inertia in that system. So the dunes, um, the dunes work better, but there's a challenge, right, because we need to get from my house to the beach, uh, and, so, and so do a lot of other people, so people walk over the dunes and the dunes get eroded, and then they, they don't work as well. So we need something to keep the dunes in place. This is the solution, right? So, Sand fences and dune grass. Doesn't look like a very engineered solution. I mean, that's my background. If I handed this in for a civil engineering project, they would, they would laugh at me. But this is a better engineered solution than the, um, than the jetties in this case. So the sand fence sticks up out of, the, out of the ground, right? It prevents people from walking over the dunes, which is nice. But its actual function is to um, keep the sand in place. And it doesn't look like it would keep the sand in place. But all it's doing is knocking sand out of the air um, as the, that the wind's blowing, and as the sand gets knocked out of the air, it accumulates, and then there's a pile of sand there, and then that accumulates more sand, and so it actually works really well at building the jetties. Even better is the dune grass, which is something that's naturally um, in these, uh, in the, on these barrier islands, but gets taken away, so you have to re replant it. Um, once the dune grass is replanted, its roots grow down into the ground, hold the sand in place, also works the same way as the, um, as the sand fences, right, where the, the sand that's getting blown through the air hits the grass, falls down, and accumulates, okay? So the dune grass and the sand fences take advantage of the inertia in the barrier island system to offer a better solution, okay? 
So let's go back to another soccer video. <laughs> That's a more recent attempt at the Panenka, right? It's like, oh crap, <laughs> what, what happened? Um, so he tried the Panenka and the goalie saved it. And so one of the lessons with inertia here is that it really, it takes cur courage to work with the inertia in a system, right? Because the penalty kick, if that guy had tried to shoot it hard and into the corner and the goalie saved it, um, the, the shooter wouldn't look like an idiot, right? It was like, okay, I was trying my hardest and I, the goalie just made a good save. But if he makes this calculated gamble and says, I'm gonna try and chip it, I think that's my best chance to score, but then the goalie calls his bluff and stands there, I mean, then you get on YouTube and you get your video shown in a talk like this. Um, so it's a, it's a, it takes courage to try the Panenka, and it took courage for Panenka to try the Panenka. Um, and it's the same way with the dune grass and the sand fences, right? Because if you're, a, if you're an engineer, or you're an elected official, and you say, well, no, we don't need these jetties that look really strong, they're made out of rocks, it's what everybody else is doing. Um, we, just, we should be investing in the sand fences and the dune grass. Um, you're kind of breaking away from the status quo, and that's, there's kind of inertia in that system too, right? You know, everybody else is doing this, that's the direction the system's going in, and we're gonna break away from that. So it takes courage. Um, the other thing with inertia is it takes analysis, right? So Panenka, that wasn't the first time he'd tried that shot. He practiced every day after practice with the backup goalkeeper on the Czechoslovakian team, right? And that's for, uh, that's for a chance at something that might never happen, right? He might never get to come up and try that penalty kick. He practiced every day after practice, and he knew what the trends were. Um, the dune grass and the sand fences, it's not like somebody just tried that, and um, that was the first step and said, oh, well, it turns out it works. I mean, there's engineering analysis that we can do. Um, there's, there's complicated modeling that you can do to see how this works, and then you can actually put it in place um, and, and test, okay, this in fact is working and we can use it somewhere else. So not only does it take courage to use the inertia in the systems, it also takes um, real uh, analysis and, um, and practice, which is what Panenka and uh, people using the dune grass and sand fences would do, okay? So back to the back to the soccer ball, and again, you know, we all know about inertia, right? You know that this ball, I can kick it over there and pick it up on my way out, um, and it's going to stop when the friction slows it down. Okay, um, but what I want you to do, and what I think we can all um, all do a really good job of, is looking for inertia in the in the systems that we care about, right? So look for inertia in the in in your work, in your school, in your play. Um, and look for inertia in, in the institutions that you care about and in your relationships. Uh, and then once you look for the inertia, you can try to, try to work with it, right, instead of like hopelessly fighting against it. You can work with that inertia um, and use it to your advantage. Uh, and that'll get us one step closer to, to answering the question, what will your Panenka be? Thank you.